Hello and welcome to a new day of the School of the Ministry. Today, uh, this is the, now you are seeing online from uh, Sannes in Norway. And uh, my name is Frank Ødegård and I'm the local pastor or the shepherd, how we call it too, in, in this place. So this day, uh, this night, I will teach about what is the local pastor or the local shepherds? What is he doing? What is his heart? What are you expecting? Who is he? What is, the, uh, what is that is, um, what you need to become that one? But first of all, I want to take you in a prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, I will just thank you that you are here together with us today. I will thank you that you're filling up with wisdom and knowledge I'm thinking that you are um, that you are a holy Father who is never leave us. That you love us more than we can understand. If we are misunderstanding, if we are not complete, that you are the one who will will take us to the next step, learn us to the next step. To uh, you will put us together in love to each other because you love us first. That's why why we can love. I'm thanking you, Father, for this evening and this night. It will be like a. Uh, opening eyes, the uh, inner heart's eyes to the people who will look at this and uh, will be together with us this night. So they will, um, there will be something uh, new that will give to them, that you will meet them in a new, uh, give them new wisdom. I'm thanking you, Father, that you are, um, you are on our shepherd. I'm thinking that you are the one we will listen to that you are the one who give us direction, that you are our high priest. I'm thanking you for that everything that you fill up, that you cover our sins in your blood. I'm thanking for this night. I'm thanking for this uh, new life, uh, uh, online apostolic Bible schools and uh, network working. And I'm thanking for all the people who are listening and that they are eagerly want to serve you, Lord. I'm thankful for that. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Then I just hope my computer will, will be my friends too tonight. I don't know how to make the screen always on, so sometimes I need to touch it. <laughs> Welcome. And again, I try to not to speak a lot of the, I don't need to speak, but bear, bear with me tonight that um, uh, that that uh, maybe I will repeat myself, or I will um, uh, this. I when I speak to you guys, I will also speak to myself because um, when we are walking uh, in the Holy Spirit, when we were walking with uh, in the will of God, when we are uh, want to be servant. We are, God is always uh, guiding our steps, and He is always like, have uh, mercy with us, because His grace is all we need to serve and to, to be together. Because all, everything in complete together is to, to serve the kingdom of God. We are not of this world anymore, but we live here. And He has given us a commandment, let us go out to the, all the world and and uh, uh, preach the gospel and save people, manifesting the God kingdom here in this world and, and um, taking care, make disciple of the people. And that is where it comes to, making disciple. I will talk a lot of Peter today. I will talk about um, um, some of the other people in the Bible too because Peter was the one, the first one he talked to, to uh, about when it talking about to be his shepherd. In real, the, 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 the over shepherd is always Jesus. He is the one who talked to us. He's over. So, but Peter, he was the commandment was to the first to the Peter. He was the one who first starting to, to, to do this ministry. But I will take you to the, um, my uh, PowerPoint. I find a beautiful picture. There was a reason I find this picture, because with the angel, and you see the shepherd, and um, uh, because I, um, it's a nice picture, because it's, 
It didn't really tell it so much because that is the day Jesus was born. And the shepherd uh, for in, in all the world has always been like the, um, the person who have, um, like doing the lowest uh, jobs in the community. He, and um, the only job he is to take care of the animal, of the owner of the animals. Um, he, uh, he is the one who, uh, he is alone. He has a totally different life than other people. He is not like, uh, maybe not that kind of educated like these things. But the point is, in, you see, see this shepherd. They, this was uh, uh, where uh, the first one who get a message from heaven that there was a king born in, in Bethlehem. And that is really like uh, amazing. I just uh, want to start with that picture because it's a, when I look for a picture of the shepherd, everyone knows that the what is a shepherd. We will go to Jeremiah. It's always nice to start in the, in for thousands, for thousands of years ago when Jeremiah the prophet was uh, uh, the prophet for the Israel people. Then he write, write to the uh, to uh, in uh, in the Bible like uh, to the people that that he will give you shepherd according to my heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Already there, Jeremiah told that he will give. God will give, not uh, uh, the shepherd, for the people, for the, uh, his own heart, as a God's heart, not because it's not our heart. Uh, this night will be a lot of speaking about what is the heart, heart of the pastor, heart of the shepherd. And as you see, I'm using the pastor and the shepherd in the, in the same times because the Bible using a lot of the shepherd, but in, in, uh, in the church and in the first church, they're starting to use the pastor like one of the, like it's the name of the shepherd that was leading the, the flock. But um, uh, the ministry and what you're doing, you can still be a shepherd like you, you are the um, one uh, taking care of the kids or the the teenage, you are doing the cafeteria, you are doing the home group. The, the shepherd heart can be so many things, uh, so many positions and so many uh, service you are doing because it's, first of all, it's somebody have got the extra heart uh, for doing this ministry and they are so valuable. But uh, maybe you're not called for be a preacher, but the one who is anointed for doing this thing to leading the church, they are, so, they are normally anointed for, uh, they have all these things and more. But sp special about this thing that I mentioned now, they will feed the people with knowledge and understanding. And this is what we will come a lot back to. It's about to be a shepherd. Your job is to feed the, um, your flock, your people, the one you will taking care of, the people, the, with knowledge. Because if, you know, without knowledge, they will go uh, lost. So that is the, um, one of the um, basic thing. If you want to uh, be a pastor, the knowledge about um, to be to in, the, in the Bible, the knowledge to know God, know um, um, yeah, I will talk. It's uh, the mandatory because that is uh, what they expect from you, so you can uh, lead them in the correct way. And of course, this ministry is we need to talk a little bit. I will not <laughs> using a lot of this because I know um, the other teacher have mentioned this Bible verse and uh, my um, um, uh, 
I'm so grateful and I'm so happy to have a pastor and an apostle in this place where I am the local shepherd and the local pastor. I am because uh, I will come a lot back to that, but um, it's about to be, have the fullness. We will read this for first. From uh, Ephesians 4, 11, 12. Um, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ might be built up. A church is the body of Christ. The church is the home. Uh, the, the Lord Jesus himself is the highest priest. He is the king of the king. He is the priest of the priest. He is the one who leading us always. But, the f but when he left to back to his father and sitting there and pray with us, and we are going with him, sitting there with him, he, is the, he give all his um, uh, fullness to different kind of minorities because if there was only one, we don't need each other because the two need each other to be the, all the body, to be complete. That is the important thing because when we are complete and we need each other, that is what is God's heart because he wants to see all the people. Uh, and, and of course, nobody is the same. Nobody is perfect. Uh, nobody is, um, have the sa same talents. That's why God put us together to be a team, to be uh, building up each other. And but special this ministry gift that we're talking about here is uh, put in the church to lifting up the holy people, lifting up the flock, taking care of the church. So um, today we will talk um, first of all and mainly about what is um, the shepherd. Uh, expecting attention and what what is the shepherd in this um, place in this five ministry post and some of the thing that uh, it's we will talk about it's it's not like okay this is only for this ministry but, but this is mainly for this ministry but some of the things that are for example about this to to be in charge or leading is not need, like um, it's not about like uh, the shepherd is doing. You are like I told you, it's a team, um, and main uh, and everything is coming from um, building up from the ground, and it's starting with the vision, but where the prophet and the apostle is the, um, the one who is building up the church, and, and and from that one, it's building up the vision and building up the fullness and all this ministry together, so we can be a strong team to. Um, uh, make us and everyone stronger together. But the different thing with that, the local pastor and the shepherd here, he is always there. He's always, his job is to, um, to, to uh, focus basically on what is his, thing he's given to him. Because uh, I mean, they are giving to, to, to the shepherd. So it's a big responsible. It's not own, It's not about to be a blessing. It's a responsible. Okay, <laughs> I need to keep on on my screen. So so uh, I will be finished before, and I'm not uh, keeping all night. But I think you will enjoy this uh, trip I have. I will start with uh, how Jesus he building up Peter. You remember him? He denied people three times, and then he was so down, Peter. And then Peter come uh, and uh, met his disciples and talked to people uh, after a dinner when they was out fishing. They have given up everything. They don't, uh, yeah, they don't, uh, what I will do now? They go back to what the old life. And then Jesus met Peter and, and uh, the other people, but he took Peter inside. I have a picture here from uh, Mount Sinai. I think it's 100 years old picture. It's but it's a really nice picture of the shepherd, how they go around taking care of the sheep. And we will start reading from John, uh, chapter 21. 
And to be honestly, this is uh, um, this is maybe the stories I hear is about um, maybe one of the uh, most alive stories because this is one of the stories. I'm not alone about this thing, but this is one of the one who's uh, calling strongest to me, to my, to 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 me as a p uh, personally, uh, as a calling. What God put in my heart, because um, um, today, like <laughs> like you understand, uh, I'm a local shepherd here. So, uh, in my heart, I'm. Um, 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 how to that how to be a shepherd that is how i want to for myself experience uh, teach you or telling this heart um because it's a personal calling i will come back to that and and one of the thing that was personal for me this is um when you have a, a ministry a personal calling you will find all this thing in the bible who who uh, <laughs> who is for you and, and you will give uh, give to the next person because what you have got you will bless to other people so they will lift up and they will get the wisdom okay John 21 uh, 15 to 70 when they had finished eating Jesus said to Simon to Peter Simon son of John do you love me more than this here coming always the first words in the Bible Bible Jesus asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? <laughs> uh, you know, in real, I could stop this uh, evening and I could just complete with this one because this is um, what is called like the <laughs> double line under and, and finish. I, could, if <laughs> I teach you this thing, you don't need to know anymore. Because that is everything, it is uh, the basic. That is Jesus asked Simon, do you love me more than this? Do you love me more than this? This is what the first rules. And uh, in real, what everything you don't need. If you have not a pastor who loves Jesus before everything, he can never be a shepherd or a pastor. Because that is the bait. That is everything you start from. He need to love Jesus more than this. And this, it means everything else. It means uh, your friends, your family, your work, everything. Then Jesus asked, tell it, and then he answered, yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. And then Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said in the third time, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And people were so hurt because he, Jesus asked him to the third time, do you love me? Three times Jesus asked, like the three times Jesus, Peter denied him before the cross. But three times he asked us, him, because that is the, everything he will point his finger upon in your heart. Do you love Jesus? And he said, Lord, you know all the things. You know that I love you. And then Jesus said in the end, feed my sheep." Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, yeah. I stopped there. Jesus told me after then three times asking him, but in, in between here, he, he gave him three commandments to the Peter. Peter, he was the first who was calling to be his shepherd. Before he was... Um, I crucified Jesus. He was praying in Gethsemane that, you know, Father, this people I have given, you give me. Please, like, see, take care of them. So Jesus always say this. 
he knew that the people who is given to him, he was the, uh, the high shepherd. He is our shepherd. That they will be, uh, he will take care of them. And then he gave the same commandment to us or to Peter to be a shepherd. And so he say to uh, Peter, feed my lambs. Lambs is the baby sheep. It means that if you are a shepherd, it's not only the shepherd who's doing this job, but this is on the heart. That is to give them the food they need, the healthy doctrine. Give them so they can grow up and be strong. The second thing is, tend my sheep. It means take care of my sheep. Protect them. S stay there. By be, the, uh, be there for me. Because he, Jesus will go home to his father. And then feed my sheep. That means the people who is already not <laughs> grown up. They are not sheep, but they are people. But he using the picture here about to be. So they need different kind of teaching. Because you cannot teach the sheep like they are lamb. Because they will go tired and then they don't like the food. Or opposite. You cannot give the same food to the lamb that you give to the sheep. So you need to know your your flock. And then I <laughs> mentioned the last thing that Simon son to Jonah, do you love me? Again, I will tell you people, more than this, more than the sheep, more than your friends, more than everything else that happen. And then in the verse 19, he says, Jesus say to yeah, in the end, of, in, the, in the verse 19, he say, Follow me. This was the big beginning, but follow me. That's the first commandment that uh, Jesus told the disciples when he followed them. Follow me. Amen. To be, a, to be a shepherd, to be a pastor, to be understood, there is a, a walk. There is a preparation time. Um, nobody starting to be to be there where I am now. Um, you need to have a call, a personally call. Yeah. If, um, to the service, and normally this personally call when you are young. Or when you are getting saved, when you, when you start listening to the voice, God will, will give you, not all, everyone have a commandment to be a witness, to be, go out and uh, spread the gospel. But someone have a special call um, to be uh, in, in their life. And um, in the second uh, Timothy 1.9, it say that um, he has saved us and called us to his holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. So it's not about us. It's not, we, not anything we have done in our life. That is his own purpose. The Father in heaven, he knows us from we was uh, born in, in, in the womb. And, and he knew everything about us. Already from there, he put our talents, and he gave us the heart, um, uh, and he's starting to build up something in yourself, and he gave you a personal call. If you don't have this call for this uh, to be a local shepherd or, or a pastor, you don't try. Don't try to be a helper man. Uh, Nella, don't try to, to take this position because you will fail. You will... It will, he will <laughs> it will kill you all of what you're trying to because you cannot try in your own because everything is what God, God gives. It's all his grace. It's all of his honor. It's, and he will, um, he is the one who give. He, he give the people. He give this, uh, this um, open the door. For myself, I was uh, uh, 15 years old. I was, um, uh, 
when I get uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit, I was younger than that when I met Jesus, but uh, at that time, I, I already uh, get a big, big heart for other people, seeing the people who was uh, uh, outside of, uh, they don't, could not take care of themselves. Um, I love to, to, to find out, like, uh, oh, these people here, this guy, he is, he is a blessing for, to do these things, or he is, uh, he, he's just, like, in the wrong place. He needs to be, uh, um, to be himself. I love to see the, to how do people work together, how they love to be together, like, uh, this guy, he loved to reading and writing. Or this guy, he loved to fixing thing with his hand and this like the mathematic. And this like guy, he he uh, is really like uh, you can trustful with other people. As a, I like to find this kind of people and help them together. And then people they are maybe um, don't always understand the social etiquettes. God loves them. I love, and that's, it's starting with these things for my, my side, that I, I love the team. I like the building up. I like to, to uh, encourage them. I like to, uh, and, and uh, I can never relax because I always thinking, oh, I would need to visit my friend. I need to be, um, uh, ask him. Everyone else is, was bully that guy, and then, okay, come and stay with us. And, and we make a team or we're doing these things. So, and then, um, but what I'm trying to tell you then, and then I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, then, then I get uh, a calling about like to be a preacher. Um, and and, and, um, and God, God starting to preparation me. But everything start with the calling. Every start with with um, that you are willingness. Because if you are not willingness to walk this path, you will, uh, you will uh, um, totally uh, damage yourself or you will be tired. You, you can never stand in. And that is why there is in this state, there are so many uh, of new pastors all around the world. I don't know the exactly... Um, uh, numbers, but they they not staying long. They starting and then they stay a little bit because this is oh they want to have the famous. They want to be uh, talking with people. They want to have uh, income. They they want to get respect or I don't know all the intention. But if the not intention is that you have a calling, and it's the only the Lord and to see these people caring for these people, lifting up these people give your life for these people, then you cannot do these things. Um, first of all, is you need to be responsible, like I told before. It's a responsible for these people. It's, it's not only a blessing. And you need to accept the cost. Uh, the cost is, uh, and the cost will be big. I will come back to it, but <laughs> in the worst case, I was seeing in the news and from Norway now about in India, I saw there was 50 church burned down. All these people, they have uh, been uh, uh, persecution and, and uh, they have given all they have for have a home, they are outcast and, and so on. And I know I have a lot of friends now in this uh, look at me that know exactly what I'm talking about. They have in from uh, Pakistan and Africa and everywhere, that they don't have anything, but the little they have, they give, give for other people. I will come more back to this, but the cost, it will cost you everything. Preparing. And when I call about, uh, maybe I will come back to it because I, I know I have a, a point coming back. But as long I, I was anointed in, as in, in this ministry for w less than one year ago. So I'm really new. But I'm so blessed. And this is what I will talk more about in this preparation too. 
uh, about, uh, I have my, my uh, the apostle in this uh, church I'm here for, that is the Arl Takery, and that is a really big blessing, because um, to standing alone, it, because the shepherd is many times alone, um, and he should not be alone, he should have the team, that's why we are believing the fullness of the, the five, uh, five-fold ministry, so he is not alone to teaching and equip the holy people, but to have more than, like to have a mentor, to have somebody who loves you, care about you, who can, you can be, um, be a disciple for, who you can look at, to follow, to learn from, that is, uh, you will never be, uh, you always need, or in need of that, especially in this preparing time, that is before, but so I'm so grateful. I'm <laughs> thanking for all the, um, the love and the frustration and um, the, that somebody has believed on me. And I know that someone believes on you too. Um, because this is how uh, the church of, is meant to be. Amen. First Timothy, I love to, l if you are, uh, follow this session that is the Timothy, uh, Timothy and um, Thess Thessalon and um, Peter's letters, read them all and just enjoy it because this is a writing to the shepherd. In uh, uh, First Timothy chapter 3, verse 6, we talk about he must not be a recent convert, or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgments as the devil. Here, Paul is written to Timothy the, about the qualification. And this is one of the, of course, you cannot put in new saved or people who is not ready. Because maybe they will be proud or they will don't understand what is going on. We will talk about this a lot more because about the character and attitude. Because that has have been missed in the centuries of all teaching to be pastor or shepherd. That is the, what I will talk about tonight. Be a disciple before you will be a pastor. Learn to follow before you lead. Uh, Mark, we can read. Um, One seven, one seventeen. Uh, all the beginning of the mark, Jesus uh, come to the earth and he met the disciples and then he say, "Come, follow me." Jesus tell them, "And I will send you out to fish for people." This is the first of all, and this is the first for you guys who is uh, listening to this uh, uh, Bible school that. First of all, you need to be a disciple before you can be a pastor. And you need to learn to follow something, someone before you can lead. The second point. I talked with a teacher in a Bible school, in one of the biggest Bible schools here in this country. And he told me that he was a lot of uh, time together with the student. And, he, and they asked him, what is the most important thing? You teach us. What is the thing you need to learn? He's one of my old pastors, and I love him so much. And uh, uh, <laughs> his, uh, his blood with his evangelist, but he is uh, uh, my example of to be a good shepherd from the f when I was young. But and then he told this to this student that from all the world, there was student from there uh, about uh, that you don't, it's not what is preaching from here that is the most important always uh, from uh, you will take with you in your life. That is time with God. What you are doing with you are alone with God. Uh, uh, when you are uh, uh, 
prayer with him, but you are in your room with him, that is the time you're building up your character. That is the time that you are getting ready to be um, um, a disciple or a follower of Jesus Christ. That is when you are alone with him. The fellowship with God and you need a, it's more valuable than anything. And of course you need a fellowship with the church. But I will promise you one thing. I think I'll write something later. I will promise you one thing. The people is people. They will uh, hurt you. They will uh, disappoint you. They will never um, always be there. But God will always be there for you. That's why it's so important that what you do, you do it for God. What you do, you follow Him. Because He will take you through. Amen. Study the word. Pray and good habits. The good habits means you always pray. Always doing the right things. Always uh, be the... Um, uh, uh, used to make a life that is uh, a good disciple or, or a good Christian's uh, way. Um, um, let's see if I get the next. Yeah, be a servant. You need to be a servant for the people. You need to have a faithful attitude. I will come back to that. And yeah, we can read this one. In Luke, um, I will only le uh, read the Luke, not the Matthew. Because the Matthew is saying the same thing. And that is uh, Luke 16, uh, verse 10. It's saying, Whoever can be trusted, whoever can be trusted with very little, can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So it means that if you are a person or you know people, you cannot trust him with a small thing in your life. How you can trust him with the big things in your life? And the same thing is, is written in the Mark, Matthew 25. You see... Uh, uh, the big example about uh, uh, Joshua, he lived all his life, he getting an old man. He was trustful, he was obedient, he is sitting with Moses' side, he lifting everything he's do. Whenever God uh, present was together with Moses, he was there. Like if you have a, an, a you're uh, uh, apostle or a, a pastor, S sit close to him. Do whatever you can to learn all the small thing you can do, because this is the key. And what happened with Joshua? He was the one who was leading the people in, in the end, but he was always a servant. But everyone will remember Joshua. David. What happened with David? Uh, yeah, I will come back to David too, but he was uh, obedient to his father. He was obedient to the king Saul. He could, that's why he gets being so great king. Elisha, he was being the prophet, that doing the biggest things in the old time only because he wants to get a double blessing from his mentor, Elia. Serve first. Learn to listen in obedience to the Holy Spirit. And like it say uh, in First um, Peter 5, Uh, and five and six, in the same way, you who are younger, submit yourself to your elders. All of you, clothe yourself with humility, 
towers one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. <laughs> this is the word. I remember last time I was here, we, we no, that was, I preached about the tongue. We will talk about that too. And I, last, before that, I talk about to be, the hum, to be humble. If you are not have the humility attitude, God cannot use you. He, he will not give you any grace. I'm sorry, guy. Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. He, you need to trust him. The same way you will trust your father or your grandfather, all the oldest people in the church. Still, if you will be a shepherd in the church, there will be a people who is older than you you need to respect and love. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. Now, be alert and sober mind. Your enemy and the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now I read him more than I should, but <laughs> sorry. But it's all about to humble ourselves. Be a good example. Build the character. I told you before. We was, um, I was mentioning in the beginning when I I talking too much in one time so now I'm coming to the point but the, you need to be a good example this is the the headline and it's about building the character I have so many good friends that I've seen I will lost many years but um, and, come, uh, and God take me back and he make a better Frank than I, I, and I was and, but he never take away the calling because that is one thing he never do. But I have seen many of my friends who was the idol. He, they was the so inspiration. They was, uh, everyone followed them because they was full of, um, they were so blessed and anointed. But what they, what they had happened in their life, they, Met the wall, <laughs> they fall down. It's, it, it, they, uh, they are not pastor anymore. What happened? Why did it happen? Yes, it, what happened is they didn't build the character. You need, you gotta have the best mentor. Judas have Jesus' mentor, but he lost his way. It's not meant, it's not happy for me to have a good uh, teacher and a mentor and a pastor in, uh, in my apostle or that is in the church. If I didn't, if I don't want to listen, then I'm lost. But the character building, that is a part of the character building. But we will, this is what uh, the next uh, Latin line now we will talk about. And then, First of all, you need to be example for the holy word in the word and action. And then, of course, we can go to back to Timothy um, 4, 4, 12. They are saying that don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, and in faith, in the purity. Uh, here's many things. You need to be a good example in the faith you have and the uh, purity. Don't, uh, we will come back to that, but in the love, everything. Um, all the Christian or uh, lost that was a Christian, if you ask them why they're not Christian, they say the problem is they have a preacher, they have a pastor or something. And he, maybe he preached really good and sweet and everything. But I lost uh, belief on him. And, or, and especially the people who is not saved or the, um, that they are uh, uh, looking what we are doing, not what we are saying. This is one of my best advice tonight. That is, you need to be example 
not only what you talk, but what you are doing. I cannot only talk to my mom like with disrespect, like, uh, like with uh, respect and love and care, but in real I don't care. There's a story in the Bible about that too. Okay, next. Jesus teach them to overwin the flesh. Haha. <laughs> I forgot to tell you one more. Uh, um, you read John, uh, the letter of John, uh, all his letters, but he was, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Johannes, he was the, they call him and his brother, Jacob, like the Thunder Brothers. You, hello, when Jesus called them Thunder Brothers, it means that they was really have a temper, they have a personality. <laughs> but they change. And there is nobody else in the Bible who was calling more than the love disciple than John. And, uh, and when Jesus hung on the cross, the last thing he told John that, John, take care of my mom. <laughs> this is the guy, the, the Thunder Brothers. And then Jesus loved him so much, and he trusted him so much, take care of my mom. This is what uh, it's expecting from us, that Jesus can see that he can trust us. But this is, uh, you, you can take this from the next step too, the step under. It's the same when you are a shepherd. You need to get in the trust with the people. Still, they have a personality, but when you teach them, when you are, they follow you as a good example. Not only what you're saying, but what you are, how you're living. So that is my second point: the pastor should have a living as a good example, living like the Christ. Um, if you are writing this down, and um, because if your pastor is uh, living another life than he's saying, that how you can trust him. And he changed his disciples when he was together with them from selfishness, the temper, and to, to be fury. And then they become friendly. They like, they're starting to be humble, and they need getting self-control of their life. Um, you need to make a standard for the one who you lead. It's about to be on the narrow road. You need to have ethical code in your life. Uh, I'm still talking about the building a character. And I'm admitting that I'm not there, but I'm seven miles, hopefully my pastor will tell me, from where I was just a few years ago. But because if you didn't, this is maybe some of the best advice I can give or I can share with you. This is about, uh, oh, there was one too much, but it's about the ethical court. It's about, for example, we can look about uh, the um, alcohol. Yeah, funny, I'm talking about these things. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and 13, it say, therefore, if you eat um, if what you eat, I eat, that what I eat causes my brother or sister to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again, so that I will not cause them to fall. I'm not telling you that you cannot eat alcohol. And then, yeah, I'm, most of the people telling that, yeah, Jesus drink wine, he have a love of alcohol, he drink alcohol. Um, but I'm telling you, from my personal side, I never, I never been um, uh, choose this path. And I sometimes I have. I'm not like non-alcoholic drinkers. I'm not saying that. But if, especially if I will be in uh, uh, with friends or uh, with my uh, church paint or the people who look up for me. My kids never see me drink like this thing. And 
it's not because I want to be like an uh, like old grumpy guy. It's because I don't want them to, to see uh, that it's okay to be filled with the alcohol or, or to, this is acceptable because maybe that will make them to fall one day. I'm not telling this is, an, uh, this is one ethical code that you need to have. This is up to you, and it's not a sin to drink alcohol. <laughs> Just <laughs> remember that. But, and, but it's the same thing if I will go and preach for Muslims. Maybe I will not eat thing. I will eat what they give me. If that, but the point is, don't do anything that uh, make other people to, uh, to fall into sin. Because that's your responsible. And I don't, maybe I will find later, but there is God telling, if you are leading people to sin, or you're leading people to, um, uh, away from God with the wrong teaching, or uh, with, uh, with um, or in out of the, uh, to falling, it's better for you, <laughs> like, to hanging with the, uh, like a stone falling in the water because the punishment will be more hard for you than anyone. This is one of the reasons I'm telling you, my friends, that if you want to be a shepherd, if you want to be a pastor, if you want to be a part of the ministry, of course, this is to all the Christians, but I cannot say it. Uh, this is uh, preaching to special this one, who listen to this, and because if you are, uh, you need to know the cost, that's why they call it narrow road, because you're responsible, it's so much different to, uh, than the other people, because the cost for one mistake can damage, uh, like can, can ending up at you, uh, you will never. You will fall out of your calling. You will fall out of what God want, can use you for. And the worst thing is to f uh, to make other people to fall. And God will. Not, that is the pun. God. Uh, yeah. About porn. Um, <laughs> I don't need to say too much, but I can say that today it's the, maybe the worst business and it w make everyone to fall. It's not the porn in himself that is making for a sin. The problem is it's making the, uh, it damage the relationship, the damage the, uh, the ethical standard. It's uh, because it should be between the husband and wife. So if you are, um, yeah, there is a sacrifice. And the best advice, like it's saying in the Bible, like if you are, with lust, take out your eyes. It's not meaning uh, uh, and laterally, but it means that you need to take it away totally. You need to say no. You need to have a no or never list um, because the temptation is so big. Um, yeah. To so have some standards about money. Um, uh, we can talk about, uh, and real there's a lot about uh, money to talk about. And uh, Luke 16, 11 to 13. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you uh, with true riches? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one or love another, or you will be devoted to the one and despite the other one. You cannot serve both God and money. Uh, yeah, as I, I, I can, uh, about this, about money, there is, uh, I, I can, um, really can have a loan preach only about money, because uh, how to give and how to, but, if you cannot handle money, like in your own house, the church, if you cannot, like, if, if you are led by the money, how you can be a pastor, how you can be a shepherd, because if your intention is to earn money, 
it's your tension is to be famous or rich, you will never success. Because all the glory is to God. We are not from this world. The rest of the world, the, the God, they are, have one God in the rest of the world, that is money. The material things, to buy things, to, to, to enjoy things, enjoy the life. No, this is not our way. The money is a gift from the Lord. He will provide us. And if you cannot handle the money, who will can trust you? Same with in a church, what you, how you are uh, taking care of the money to the other people in the church. It need, you, you can never lie. You can never be unfaithful with, to handle money. If you, are un, if you are not handle the money, trust me, just the small things. You cannot go on a trip and then telling that you are using the church money if it was meant for not using for if you own personal holiday. Because you lose all your respect, you lose all your uh, ability to they will trust you or, or can. So you need to have one Lord, either it's God or it's the mammon. And encourage people, like it's in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, 7, it's saying that people should give of free will, like they should not force anyone. And that is one of the character too. Um, if you are a preacher who want to force people, making you, if you are manipulating people to give, a giving for them to, uh, you want them to give extra for the church, or so you will have maybe the church will build up because your attention is to, get more salary, something, you are lost. That is not your uh, job. Uh, and to convincing people or make them feel bad. Mm. If you are not humble what, to take care of this thing in the right end. You see the, yeah, one example here I'm writing about Dahlia and Samsung. Dahlia, she was uh, paid and for destroy Samsung. And she because of Dahlia, the mo yeah, <laughs> sorry, I, uh, my point was the opposite gender. I see the time going really fast. <laughs> I have so many things. About a woman or man, depends on what gender you are, but the opposite gender, you cannot, you need to be careful. This is the ethical code. You need to be careful how you handle these things. Because everyone, nobody wants you to be, uh, everyone wants you to uh, fail as a pastor. Everyone wants that, especially the devil. And it's not the people, but the devil uses the people to, to make you fall. That's why sometimes it's, it's okay to have rules. Like if you want to be alone to have um, spiritual care about the woman, don't be alone. Take you with you my wife or a friends or take a phone call or something. Or don't misuse these things, especially when you are young. <laughs> because you are more easy to uh, fall in these things. Um, and so many uh, uh, really good pastors have uh, lost the, the, uh, they are lost because of the other gender. Like I told you with that Dahlia and um, Samsung, she put him down. You saw what Joseph did when uh, that uh, sister of the emperor um, seduced him. He ran away. If he didn't run away, maybe that was the finish of the. What will happen if, we, if Joshua was, uh, did this uh, fall in sin with that lady? Maybe we will never. <laughs> Jesus will be born. Like he will, the Israel people will be, stop everything. And the last thing I have uh, put up that is, uh, I was preaching before, so you can read about it, but that about uh, the power you have in your tongue to speak life or death in your tongue. Don't speak rumors, don't speak bad about people. Um, I know these things I'm telling now, it's not easy. I know these things I'm telling, it's like uh, everyone's, fail, everyone will sin, but do the, uh, for yourself what you can do to not fall in this um, problem. And 
forgive if you do it. Of course, you should not like uh, misuse like uh, alcohol or, or all this other thing. But for example, if you talk bad about people, forgive, asking for forgiveness. You cannot live, uh, make up with your brother, because um, uh, and build your character this way. I, I'm sorry, but I need to use time on this point uh, because this is, uh, for my side, it's uh, uh, maybe the basic, uh, like one of the biggest problems for the one who uh, 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 have a dream or they have a wish, they want to be a pastor, and then they fall in this thing. And <laughs> I... I uh, play with my words when I told you they have a dream or wish, because that is not. They can have a dream from God, but they need to have a calling. And you need to build your standard of living. You can learn all the technique, how to preach. You know, I'm, sometimes I feel I'm the worst preacher in this country. And, um, but God is my father and nobody else. I, if I do wrong, I'm so sorry. If I say wrong, I hope people will forgive me, and I hope I will get more wisdom and, and uh, friends who want to take care of me, so I will uh, be more good with how I will sharing or helping people. But this character building is the, uh, one of the uh, most important things that I can share for my own life and from that you're seeing. And, and it's, uh, it's a time to, to set a new standard. Because God, he, he, the story about the new wine and the new wine uh, shield, you cannot like getting anointed, but you still are uh, the old you. You need to change your character. Because if you do it for yourself, you will fail. Okay, amen. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Grace, grace, you need grace. Without grace, you will fail. Grace is the next point for your ministry. It's all about grace. God, he is the one who gives your strength. He is the one who gives the grace to the one who will serve with the calling he will have, kid. That, so if you full of the steps that I'm teaching you tonight in your calling, he will give you the grace. But if you have a calling to be um, the shepherd, but you run away and want to be a prophet, I don't know if, uh, how it will be, but you will, I think you, you will have a problem. Because you need to be where uh, the grace is, where the door is open. If you're trying to run, if the door is closed, it will hurt you. <laughs> Maybe I'm bad to explain, but, but I, I think you get my point. Next point, it's really important. To be in the grace that I'm talking about for the ministry. Again, it's, um, maybe it's personal, but many people, it's a problem with the past. And all have sinned. And all have mistake. That's why we have been saved. That's why we have been cleaned in the Jesus blood to be to be clean in his eyes. We are forgiven. But if the devil make us to believe that still the past is after us, we will knock on the door again. It will hurt ourselves. You, you will be stuck. The past will always, if you never let it go, it will always follow you. I could tell a lot thing from my own life and a lot thing that is distinct. But many bro fathers, sons, mother, daughter, and disciple of Christ, they, have they, they are stuck 
because they cannot forg- they cannot fight the past because you are forgiven god have forgive you amen um i think i could talk more about but i uh, i will move on i talk about um i can t- the bible was we can read it in the proverbs 6 6 to 8 <laughs> it's written there in the Bible, go to the ant. Have anyone heard this story before? Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseers or ruler, yet it stores its provision in summer and gathers food at the harvest. Look at the ants, my friend. He working hard. He's doing his job. He he never give up. He don't need anyone to tell what he will do because he know that. Oh, it's nice weather outside. I should not just lay on my sunbed and just enjoy because when it's sun, this means we need to work harder because another day it will come rain. This is to our shepherd. This is to you as a pastor. It will come rain. So when it's sun, do your job. Do what it come because it will come a hard time. Um, and um, I want to use the like parable like about soccer player. Of course, I'm from Norway. We are proud to uh, have uh, in the neighborhood here. The, he's uh, grown up. That is uh, Arling Holland. And this guy, he has so much uh, talent. He's born with the talent. He has everything in his hand. Like, he is healthy, he's strong. He know from his father and his mother, is both of them is good athletes. So he get the talents. He was born for doing sports. But... I will promise you one thing, if he was not going to the training ground, if he's not going to the gym, if not to have a good mentor, his father, uh, and the good guys they have in uh, and his uh, football club who teach him, he will not be the soccer player he is today. Maybe he is today the world's best football player in the story, history maybe for someone. But if he not work hard, he's not doing his job. My friend, if you want to be a shepherd, if you want to be a pastor, if you are called to this ministry, you need to work hard. Nothing come free. You can have the talent. God has already put the grace. He's putting everything that you need. That, uh, yeah, but it's saying in the Bible, it's not about action. It's not what you do. No. That is right. There is nothing what you do to make the grace or get the calling or that God will love you. But if you not do or walk with and doing things, you will still <laughs> be not trustworthy or you will not come anymore, uh, come n- n- any step f- further. Amen. So who want to be Alfing, Arling Holland, sorry. Now we will go back to uh, John. And guess where and guess who. We will preach about, uh, uh, we will talk about the good shepherd. We will talk about the shepherd, the basic. Of course, the, you know that I will, I will mention this today. That is written in John 10. We read from 11 to 15. I am the good shepherd. That is Jesus who's telling about himself. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He lays down his life. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, that is means the devil. He abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is hired the hand and he cares nothing for the sheep. 
I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. I just, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. This is a story Jesus is telling about himself that he is the one um, over sheep. He is our uh, sheep over all sheep. He is the, the one we follow. He is the one we will listen to. The, ho- the one we will, uh, we will, um, will uh, grow up in our life. We will be like clothing our life in Jesus because he is our everything. He is our Savior. He is our the one who take, uh, took our place. Uh, and we are sitting with him, with the right hand. But this parable, I will use to talk to you as a shepherd. The right heart for the flock. We talked about it before. Not for the money and not for the career. Sorry, guys. If you want to have this as a main job, yeah, maybe you can. There is a lot of... Uh, uh, need for pastors in big church or other church, but I don't know. But then maybe it's not sure that that is what is God's will that you will be the calling. But uh, or some maybe you will get income, you will get the salary, but may, because you deserve the salary. But maybe it will be so little that you will really have a suffering time. Maybe you will um, um, be a missionary, like building a church, or you will, he will give you something. Um, for some people, because one story I read in a book, there was one a pastor, uh, one guy who was saved in a prison, and he uh, uh, he was so uh, charismatic and so happy. He's starting to sharing the gospel in the prison, and then many people get saved. They starting to making a lot of like a church in the in the prison. Um, and he was a good example. He's doing a great job. The pro- and then, after some times, they, he, he, everyone loves him. He, the p- people who work there, like the prison guard, they get saved too. But and then he will get a um, uh, chance to get out. I think this guy I read about it was from Ukraine. And he, uh, um, they told him that you have behaved so good, we will let you go out of the prison. And then he he feels so sad in his heart because he sees there's so much jobs in the prison. So he denied he don't want to go out yet. He wants to stay more. <laughs> I don't know how long he stayed, but maybe one year more. Because he could not leave his people, his flock, his people that he take he 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 care for. This is what the shepherd heart is. He will not leave them. And the next point, the pastor should not shine. The pastor's job or the shepherd's job or the, um, not the job, but the, the one, one he is called for, he is to lifting up the holy people, l- teaching them, care about them. But when the other people will shine and when Jesus will shine through what um, he see, that is when your heart will shine. N- um, the day you will be happy or you will enjoy because if you see when you will come to uh, that your name will be on your list for the preacher, then you are um, wrong road. If that is your wish, to, to preach because you want to uh, show your face there, then you, you are wrong. Because God will put you there when it's the time is right, because when you are ready, because he will anoint you with his grace. And you will not shine. You will dig in the dirt. You will take care of the people. Matthew 20, I don't know if I have time to read all, but um, 
just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus come not here for being the star. He come for serving. He's sitting with the outcast. And the hired man, we read about the higher hand. He can, he can have the knowledge. Uh, he, know, he, he really he can be a good pastor. But when the storms come, you will see where, who is the real, uh, who, who is have that calling. Like if you have a, if you are a shepherd for the whole house church, or like the house group, like you have a, uh, you're a part of the uh, shepherd team. You, that is, uh, God give you because that is, you will get the energy from. That is what you will love to do, not because somebody forced you, but that is you will love to do. And then you will, s and then you will care about these people. It's not because of you. Um, The hired hand, it means that, for example, like um, I will take a job in another church but because I want the, uh, the salary, but in real, and I'm really good. I have done all the priest education and everything. I'm a really good pastor, but in real, I want to stay in another place. That is where my heart is. I don't, f then you, when the storm come, Maybe that is uh, the, the suffering will not be you. It will be the people who you are uh, take you that is given to you. So don't be the higher higher hand. Be sure if you are anointed at the local shepherd that you are the local shepherd. I'm not telling that good ca God cannot um, place you in the place or move you, but I believe that basically. You are placed one place that God wants you to stay and that you are loyal for this flock. Uh, next point. Uh, the shepherd heart is like a father who cares for his children. This is the, I told you in the beginning, I will talk a lot about the heart today and uh, and the heart is, uh, I need to talk really much faster so I can be finished with all I ever want to give. But like if my, ki my kids will suffer, I will get, do everything for them. I will give my life. I don't care. This is how God will take. That is how a shepherd, the pastor is. If there are some people uh, who are suffering, he will do everything for them like he does for the children. So when you are a, a, a married with a, a local pastor, you know that he is married with the church. He's not married. He, that is his first um, uh, relationship that is with the people in the church because he cares so much about them. He will never let them down. He will give his life for the sheep. I'm, I'm talking about the shepherd who is on uh, his heart. And what we're reading about the story about the good shepherd, the sheep knows his voice. This is mainly about Jesus. The people will know the voice of Jesus. And, but it also means that about they will know their local pastor voice or the, the, the one who leading the church because they will trust him. And that will be over time they will learn to trust they will, they will accept his comfort and of his fellowship uh, because they learn to love him. They learn, they see that he cares. They see that he is there with them. Then they open their inner heart so he can heal them. And, and, and that is not for everyone because they will, you will not uh, open your heart to a stranger. You will do that to the one who... Um, your trust. Shepherd's attitude. I have the next PowerPoint after I need to <laughs> be finished in the half an hour. The shepherd's attitude 
I'm still in the character. Uh, Peter, he talked about the shepherds out in uh, uh, First Pete 5, 5, uh, 1 to 4. To the elders amongst you, appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ, suffering who also will be shared in the glory to the be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you're willing, as a God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusting to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown as glory that never fades away. This is the glory, the sheep, that is Jesus Christ, but you will get in the crown. Like everyone will do that, they have been faithful servant to what God called them to, because he called everyone to the specific, uh, to, to serve. And I'm still talking not to only a local pastor in a big church, uh, it can be like a, in a small group, it's, it's for your family, all that one who is calling for a different ministry. But uh, I'm talking mainly to the, uh, the shepherd in the, um, in the shirt, and it's, there is many people who ha- have uh, that calling and the caring because that is the, that uh, father's heart. Of course, all the, every Christian have already fought the father's heart because they are born again and they are a new creature. <laughs> but somebody have a calling that like uh, that is uh, giving the, the extra strength to walk that way, to take that responsible. I hope I'm telling the right thing. <laughs> Gratefulness. Let people feel valuable. Ah, I, you know, I love so much when I find this... Uh, um, in the first Timothy, uh, in, in the first two, that is written that Paul, that is written this uh, letter to his uh, uh, beloved Timothy, who was uh, put there to be the leader of the church. <laughs> and, and I hope that this will be in this church too, always. Uh, for my church and your church, that um, whoever will be the leader, you will be so grateful to the one who you are together with, the one you are uh, close to you. Tim Paul write in his letter, not only here, he write it so many places. The same like Jesus, he wrote all the places that how he loved his disciples and uh, uh, the, his apostle. And he's written here to Timothy, my true son in faith. He 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 he, uh, he, know, he, he re, he's not afraid to tell how he is happy for the people around him. I know we are different people, but uh, and then somebody is really good to 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 encourage people. Somebody is not natural. But maybe this is something we need to, uh, yeah, not for fake, but it should be from the real. But to um, be grateful and let people feel valuable, I think this is really, really important for attitude. A pastor needs to work with joy and free of will. Like we read about last time, it needs to be free. He needs to be this uh, um, um, energy that he this is the love to do nobody will force him to do the job and they, he need to encourage because he need to be if the church know that yes this is my best people I love you guys and I will do everything for them 
We will talk more about this later, but it's about to be an example to ruling, uh, to not ruling over them, but leading them and to lifting them up, to serving them. They will follow you because they trust you, not because, because you don't need to ask. If, yeah, how will a kid feel if you treat them like a burden? If you're telling that kids that, oh, no, you are uh, so expensive for me, I cannot give you food, or you cannot do these things because, uh, and then the kids see that you're using money for yourself, but you don't care about them, they will, they will feel that, okay, um, he's only focused on himself, like his own, uh, uh, what he's doing. Uh, if you as a pastor getting th- uh, will be treating unfair, don't, l- don't let anyone else see it. And um, <laughs> again, this is uh, if somebody else will get a shining or whatever happened in, the, in, in your church, don't let anyone see because the next day the sun will, will change. But if you will treat him like you are upset or you will be angry or whatever, it will never good come out of it. It can't take away your calling and your, your grace over your good work to see that uh, God can use you for good, great things. We talk about to have the Father of God's heart like. You may see how Jesus welcomed the kids in the New Testament. He not put them away. He was the son of the God, but he loved to talk with the kids. And how he invited Nicodemus to talk with him. Uh, the next point, it's a little bit the same. In first, we can read in First Pete four nine. Be generous, have open house, no complaining, be a good host. It's like offering hospital. It's written in the uh, first Pete uh, chapter four. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. <laughs> wow. Oh, so I need to not, like, if you met a pastor and then he, or like that, and then you really, you want to talk to him and then he will close the door, what you will think? Then, okay, you will not bother him anymore. Of course not, because he don't like. He will, you see that he don't like you to be there. No, if you are a local shepherd, you should invite. Maybe it will be the guy that have a drug problem or whatever. This is what is your calling. This is what you have signed up for. Be a pastor for the kingdom of God. You cannot only study and learn. It's not a job you are, you are taking. You are not getting to be an engineer or something, and then you go home after 3 o'clock and relaxing and, and barbecuing with your family. No, it's not like that. This is your life. If your wife uh, uh, wants to stay reading, uh, go out for a walk, and then you get visitors that need to talk to you, sorry, guys, you're married with the church. You are, this is what you are called for. Of course, you have a chance to say, <laughs> of course, sometimes you need to say no, but you need to plan, you need to take care of your family. It's always the priority, number one. But get what I'm saying to you. This is not a nine, uh, seven to nine, uh, five jobs. You need to be positive. You need to, to uh, understand this is a calling for your life. You have given your life for Christ. You need to be led by the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. That is the same thing in real, but it's the Holy Spirit and the Word, it's always connected. But He God, only the Holy Spirit who leading, who is telling the truth. And, and then um, 
uh, it, that's why we are so blessed because we are believing and we are talking about to have the ministry for uh, fivefold ministry because we are we are different um, kind of equipment so we can help each other put each other together and find be lead of the holy spirit um, and if you are a, a local pastor and that you are the maybe the one who take uh, uh, the leadership sometimes you will always have this team around you you will never be alone um, because there was always a team uh, to uh, the fullness. How you react as a pastor if you get unready fair. I talk about uh, let it <laughs> you, no, you don't let um, uh, you don't not need to you, you, it's important that you don't um, let others see it, but you need to lift yourself up. You need to overcome. You need to um, pray or um, um, uh, um, you show that you have a character. You can a uh, hard-headed that you can uh, wor- uh, you can be that local shepherd that they can trust. You cannot be like uh, um, uh, the waves on the sea that are waving everywhere because you need to be steady. You need to be... Uh, the attitude and the character same t- time to build. Uh, that's why, the, like we read in the Bible, new saved should not be given to that kind of responsible. Amen. Um, be the Christ like as a shepherd. I think um, the, ch- the sheep that are given to you, like Jesus tell that he was giving this disciples to him from the Father, like we have been given to people who come to the us. You should not rule, but you should leave with the example. You should walk. The way the what you're talking, you should still um, live after that one. You should preach the word with healthy doctrine and encourage for volunteering. Uh, in Mark, at ten. You can read there uh, from 42 to 45. Uh, Jesus called them together and he said to them, You know that those who are regarding as rulers of the Gentiles, Lord is over them, and their high official exercise authority over them. Not so, but not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you, must be a, your servant. And whatever wants to be first must be slave to all. For even if the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and, good, and to give his life as ransom for many. The same way Jesus gave his life. You need to um, understand that you will give the life for one single person still, if he is lost. We will come back to that. Make a godly team. We talk about the fivefold ministry, the fullness of the church. Not the pastor is ruling over, and not he's doing all the uh, equipment of himself. He is not the prophet. He is not the anointed as the evangelist. He have his, his uh, specialist who doing this thing. Make it and, and build the church on the apostle and the prophet. The, t- the teaching. The next point, <laughs> I will not uh, go deeply in this because I have so many other good guys, teacher in the church who will talk more about it, but never manipulating or controlling people 
whatever you're thinking or doing or want or how you can uh, switch it in your way of living or talking or, yeah, praying and, and, and all the things. Don't standing and pray like people would be manipulating or like it's like a, from God just to get some point or benefits or if it's a, in the wrong um, way. You should never control or never manipulating people. You are serving the high God, the, high, the highest God he who, cre who created heaven and earth. This is the worst thing that is like Jessica, Jezebel spirit. And sometimes you can hear that people is like, if you preach, you will pray, and that, but in real you are preaching to the people. Hello, you're praying to the Lord. You're not preaching to the people. You're praying. If you are telling that to people like, oh, I feel this is my anointment. Hello, if you feel anointed for something, God will open the doors. God will uh, put you there because it will shine of your uh, grace and all the other people will know that yes and they will be happy you don't need to be like shoulders or fighting for <laughs> your position it will never work like this in the church and it's totally opposite we're fighting for helping people up and when they are up we will be happy for them I will come back to that yeah, n never use the position. Not like if I will say, oh, this is God's will. How can I say that if you, the other people tell me, I don't feel that. Because if it's God's will, everyone will say yes. We this is one uh, point I, <laughs> I love. Uh, I grown up, I will not... <laughs> I, uh, from my uh, youth schools and all these things, I have never met, they, many people have always telling me these things, that I, they never met the Christian who left the faith or the church because they didn't like Jesus. But I have met hundreds who left because the Christians around them look and act nothing like Jesus. You should look like Jesus. Jesus eat with the sinners. Jesus, he wants us to be like him. We should be his shepherd on this earth. So what that means, we need to walk first. We need to be like that. So if we are not walking out on the streets and preach the gospel, healing the sick, how will the rest of the church do it? If not, we are not giving the tent. If we are not uh, doing uh, the, our part, if we are not showing us a good example, nobody else will trust us. We talk about Zacchaeus house. He sit there, eat with them. Jesus is saw the Zacchaeus in the tree. This is the shepherd's heart. Gee, nobody else saw that guy in the tree. Same with the blind man. He screamed to Jesus. Nobody want to hear or see him or understand him, but he know Jesus saw it. This is the shepherd heart. The shepherd will always sitting and crying, not because he is uh, uh, insane, but he will cry for all the lost sheep or all his people. I will come back to that. I want to read in um, in First Samuel. 17, he telling that, uh, David, how his separate duty, he's telling that. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it struck and it res rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it and killed it. David gave his life. He learned from the basic to be, from he was a young kid, to give his life for the people. That is the king. 
that was most, uh, every, they still talk about in Israel. This is how we should be the shepherd. The lost sheep. Um, no. Now it's making fun with my fingers. I'm getting uh, more to the close to the end, but uh -huh. I am. We can uh, read from Luke. Ten. Now I need training to talk fast. I have one Bible teacher in the Bible school I am following. He is, is really lovely, but he's <laughs> really talking fast. Luke 15. That was the one who ran out from that. From verse uh, four to six, we read. Then Jesus told them to uh, this par parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and lost one of them. Does he leave the 99 in the open county, like country, and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And then he finds it, he joyfully puts on his shoulders, and he goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. This is the shepherd, rejoice with me. Uh, shepherd count his sheep. How we know he was 100 if he don't count them? How we know he lost one if he don't count them? He know them, he count them, he cares for them, he, he sees them, he knows they are special, he is uh, putting his arms around them, they are the, what everything for him. That's why he will miss them if they are not in the church or if they are not coming in the Bible gifts of the prayer, he will miss them. A shepherd fight for his sheep. He's not staying with the 99 where he's comfortable to stay. He ran after the last one. I don't want to, I will not read this now, but in Mark 4, 14 to 20, uh, there is a story about the sower. And many people, they have, uh, they was leave the church because of the problem in their life. There has they are uh, the devil attached them, or they fall in sin, or there was only a small time of joyful. I don't know what's the reason the sheep left. Maybe it was because of the 99 who was not acting as a Christian. But the shepherd, the local shepherd, he will leave this church for this one because that is his heart belongs to. Because that sheep belongs to his father. And he's responsible. That is everything that is important for He can never stop on it. And, and when he finds this sheep, and he gets saved. I was, uh, when I was a young, in, uh, not far from here, I was like taking care of the cows. And, and milking them and uh, take and uh, all these things. I, uh, but in the neighbor house, they have sheep. And then <laughs> the, she, uh, the farmer who uh, the owned the sheep, he said, you can try to go inside and, and, to, uh, and try to touch them or like that, but they will, not, uh, they will run away from you. Mm, true. But when he go in, they run to him. Because I'm not there. He, you learn so much just to see what's going on. The problem with people today, they are only reading and study how to communication, how to do the good jobs, but they don't learn from the, the how, from, uh, how the Jesus lives, how to care for the people. He rejoices only with the one who gets saved. The 99th day are happy, okay. In, in uh, John 3, The apostle of love, <laughs> Jesus loves so much, he's written in chapter 1, verse 4, I have no greater joy, no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. 
Amen. No greater joy. Oh, I thought it was the joy that you receive your salary or your famousness and you get invited to talk about uh, the crusade or the con conference. That was your joy? <laughs> you have misunderstood. The joy for the local shepherd or the shepherd heart is to see the one that got saved. I'm soon finished. Your, yeah, then there's uh, my uh, jumping a little bit in my um, um, proverbs. I will preach about a um, uh, local city, and then I will uh, we will talk about um, um, the fallout. Um, Jonah. We have talked a lot about that in our church. Um, so. In the end, we will talk a little bit about the lo your local city. A local shepherd, he is placed in one place. When I was young, I believe in the one church, I believe in one local place, uh, village, there was one church, and the community was together in that church. I still believe, but I believe that it's most important is that you be a part of a church who is fivefold ministry, who uh, equip the saints, who, who uh, pull down the grace of God, and uh, the um, want to worshiping with uh, the Holy Spirit uh, in, in in, in, in the right way and all these things and the people where the um, the, uh, the living God um, moving and what is the right place to be but when you are placed as a local shopper or a pastor in a city or a place that place will be your heart Two. We can read about Jonah uh, in one uh, verse two. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. This is the command that uh, Jonah get from from the Lord. And then in verse chapter four, we can read uh, six. Then the Lord. Yeah, then the Lord, um, then the Lord uh, God provided a leafy plant. This is after the story about Jonah. Then he, he was three days in the whale and he, he get, get the second chance to redeem and doing the calling from God. And it's a, it's a great story it's about to get the second chance. But it's a story here that we read now. He, he don't want to go to that city to live, delivering the message because he, he know God is so merciful and he, he thinks they deserve to be punished. <laughs> um, and when, when God saved the city, Nineveh, he was sitting under the, its leafy plants and getting the comfortable he was comfortable and, uh, and relaxed and enjoying. <laughs> he was so happy where he was because he could enjoy that uh, sunshine. Like I told you before, to have some barbecue and sunshine outside. You are not meant to be that. And then in the chapter 4, 10, 11, he say, 
to Jonah because that plant died. And then he was so upset at that Jonah. And then, but the Lord said, you have been concerned about this plant. True, you did, true, uh, taught you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and it died overnight. <laughs> God has given you the grace. He has given you the church. He has given you the member. The member is not coming into the church. They are not because you are famous or because you have throwing them out of the houses. But the Holy Spirit is calling them to come to be equipped in the body of Christ. But, so don't be focused on your own need and your own comfort. Because God has given you these things. He is the one who provides the plants to your comfort. But you don't have the problem with Jonah. He don't have the heart of the father, the shepherd's heart we have talked about. He don't see the happiness of all the wickedness and all the lost who will be go to hell or be uh, judged. You should fight for your local city. You should do everything you can do to save your city. Because your city is on your heart. Your city is the place you are, you are um, put with the church. So your church should be equipped and be like our army who will be ready to go. And no, it's not like uh, you sitting there and telling commandment what your uh, other member or your fellow mates and friends in the church are doing. Uh, because we are lead, led by the Holy Spirit. When we, the Holy Spirit move and putting his uh, um, his um, closeness, when he's coming close to us, when you can feel he is here and moving, the church, there's no one who's local shepherd who is running in front of them. That is the Holy Spirit talk to the, everyone and they, everyone will know their vision, the calling, the, what they should do. They will, we will attack the devil together. We will go and save the sinners, give, take care of the poor and the one who is lost, heal the sick and we will do it in joy. We will, but the ministries, they will equip the saints. They will protect the saints. They will give their life for them. When the media will come and hang the, the pastor up and telling why you believe that to be a gay is a sin, you will, like, you will go in the front of the church and you will be the one who will say that God make man and, mom, and a woman in his picture, not man with a man. He, he, he wants us to live like the book. He wants us to live to free, to join. He wants to live in the presence of Him. He wants to be our Father. He, he wants to talk to us. He wants to, uh, <laughs> we want, he want to give us His richness and His wisdom. He wants to give us health and wellness. Thank you, Lord, for that you are here tonight. I thank you, Dad, for giving me the chance to uh, sharing my heart, to sharing what I have on my heart. I'm thanking that, Lord, that you, uh, it's not about me. I thank you that just that um, you will give the wisdom that I have got to my friends. If it's still only that to be like you, Jesus. If it's only to understand that you should not manipulating or that you should, uh, you should fight for the one single that is lost. That is the more important than to, to work for the, the comfortable uh, life because you, you belong to save the one who is not, that is going in the wrong direction that the devil have control of. I thank you, Father. I'm thanking you so much for all the apostle and the bishop is going in the front or the leader who go in the front 
And I'm thanking so much for the Arl Chakery, that is Apostle, that is, uh, his, uh, can, is being my mentor. And um, I'm thanking for that we can, um, building up, we can uh, equip the saints together, like in a fivefold ministry, we can make each other uh, shine because we don't want, because it's not about us. It's about to, to, to see the brothers, to be, see the saints uh, be strong in Jesus Christ so we can uh, make the God's kingdom on this earth. I'm thanking you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank you for tonight.